Hi there, in this video, we are going to learn the counter in its actions, which are up counter, down counter, and up down counter. Finally, we'll extend the project which was done in the previous video. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Well, let's learn the content instructions with this simple usage of the ARP content. As you see, this counter has four inputs and three outputs. Let's see how this counter works with this diagram. Well, the current counter value is incremented by one. If the signal is set at input CU, changes from zero to one. Note that the value of this counter is less than 999 and you can have this number in two formats in hexadecimal format and also its equivalent bcd code as you see the signal state at output q is one if the counter value is greater than zero well the counter has two inputs to change its value directly if there is a one at input r then the counter value is set to zero and the counter value can be preset with the value at input pv if there is a positive edge at the second input okay here are the counter instructions let's test the op counter first let's determine its name it includes the c letter plus a number starting from zero Well, if the desired number for the third input, PV is stored on a word address such as MW20, you can enter the address directly. Also, we can enter a constant number with this format, C plus the hash sign plus a number. Remember, the number should be less than 999. Well, let me open the PLC scene simulator to test the op counter. Okay, I forgot them to select the MPI port for the PLC scene simulator. Let me select it and then download the program. Okay, as you see, I can use the first input to increment the counter value by one. The second input can be used to load this number to the counter. Finally, the last input of the counter, I0.2, can reset the counter value to zero. Similarly, let's test a down counter. Note that the names of counters must be different.
Okay, like the up counter, the output of the down counter is 1 if its value is greater than 0. And this counter is set with the value at input PV if there is a positive edge at input S. Note that when the value of the counter is greater than 0, the counter is decremented by 1 if the signal state at input CD changes from 0 to 1. Now let's reset the counter value to 0. Note that its value cannot be less than 0. Alright, let's look at the up-down counter. As you see, it has one more input. When the value of the counter is less than 999, the counter is incremented by 1 if the signal state at input CU changes from 0 to 1. And the counter is decremented by 1 if there is a positive edge at input CD and the value of the counter is greater than 0. Note that if there is a positive edge at both count inputs, both instructions are executed and the count value remains unchanged. And finally, its output Q is 1 if the counter value is greater than 0, like the two previous counters. Well, we can also use these three calls to have counters in our programs. Let me use an example of the help window to explain them. Okay, based on this program, if the signal state of input I0.0 changes from 0 to 1, the preset value of 100 is loaded to counter C10. If the signal state of input I0.1 changed from 0 to 1, the value of counter C10 will be incremented by 1, unless the value of C10 is equal to 999. And finally, we can use I0.2 to reset the counter C10. Now, let's use the counter instructions to extend this project, which was done in the previous video. I want to know how many boxes are entered and how many boxes there are on the two base can be added. First, let's add two sensors at the beginning and end of the production line. Now, let's add two digital displays to the control box. I'll use the first one to show the number of all input boxes, and the second one to show how many boxes there are on the two pair conveyors.
Also, let's add a reset push button. I'll use that to reset my contest. Now, let's modify the connection settings. Because I have some new inputs and outputs. So, let's select the driver item under the file menu. Click on the configuration and then modify these numbers. Also, I need to select work as my numerical data type because my counters use word memories to store their values. Now, let's connect the reset push button and the two sensors to my PLC inputs. Okay, on the other side, I need to connect the two digital displays to these two analog outputs. Note that we can change the PLC addresses by changing the offset parameter. For example, let's change this parameter for the word outputs. Now, my analog addresses have changed to QW10 and QW12. Remember, each word address includes two bytes. In other words, 16 bits. Now, let me update my symbols table in Semantic Manager. Okay, the next step is updating my program code. Well, let's create a new network and use an app counter to count all internet boxes and display its value on the first digital display. I need to connect the first input of the counter to the first diffuse sensor. Also, let's use the reset push button to reset the counter value. On the other side, I only need to connect the second output, CV, to the QW10 address. Remember, I've connected this address to the first digital display in the factory I.O. software. Similarly, let's create a new network for the second digital display and use an up-down counter to count how many boxes there are on the belt can be yes. I need to connect the first input of the counter to the first diffuse sensor and connect the second input to the second sensor.
Okay, now let me save, download, and then test my program. As you can see, the up counter is counting the all in the boxes. And the second one determines how many boxes there are on the two belt canvas. Also, I can use the reset push button to reset the counter's value to zero. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video. Take care. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.